Hi there and welcome back. Today I'm going to be repotting this hackberry. When you see leaves unfurling like this or before this, in other words, just bud swelling, this is a very good indication that the tree can be repotted. The tree was last repotted a few years ago, so the repotting is now needed. Uh, Celtis have an ability to rapidly fill the container, very much like trident or Chinese maples, um, with roots. And so it's important that uh, to keep the vigor of the tree up, that you repot it fairly frequently. A lot of the development of this tree is detailed on my website in a series of blogs that I wrote. I, I developed the tree from seed uh, and it was then field grown and eventually lifted from the ground and then further development took place in a bonsai pot. When I first started developing trees, I had a, very, I had a certain aesthetic in mind which has subsequently changed quite dramatically uh, in that I don't have a very formal uh, tr upright trunk as in the, or as this tree uh, illustrates and then with fairly defined foliage pads this is no longer the aesthetic that I use for my deciduous tree styling. Now you'll notice that in two places I've got uh, something rather weird going on. Uh, this is uh, approach grafting and uh, I've got a link uh, to some previous videos on that on how to um, how to approach graft with uh, Celtis or two, two different types of grafts for Celtis. Over the coming season, depending on what these grafts do, I'm going to decide either to continue developing the tree with the grafts, um, in other words, to develop this, this branch here from, from this graft. It has taken, but it's, it's still fairly weak. Um, I'm not sure if this branch at the front here, which is the second graft, has taken. Of course, I can attempt it again. And my experience with grafting this uh, species has not been great. Um, they, 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 they don't graft as easily as other species that I've worked on. And, um, but based on that, I'm going to make a, deci a decision either to pursue this uh, or I'm going to air layer the tree shorter. And uh, so if I air layer the tree, it's, it's going to be um, in this area here. It's, a, it's not such an easy decision to make because, of course, a lot of development and, um, has gone into the tree already. But when one makes decisions on uh, the future of bonsai, uh, you do need to take the long term into account and not necessarily uh, you know, what, what, what looks good now or what saves time. So although I, a lot of time has been uh, invested in getting the tree to the point that you see it at now. Um, I'm not certain if perhaps, or I'm considering that perhaps if I had to air layer the tree and make a much smaller tree but with a much better ramification and a little bit more uh, uh, deciduous like uh, I would say that um, I'm going to perhaps end up with a better tree, albeit smaller. So more than likely over the course of the growing season ahead, I'm going to make a decision over whether I want to air layer the tree, which will be best done in late spring when the spring leaves harden off. That is the best time to air layer the species. Uh, so at that point in time, I'd like to make a decision. Uh, you're welcome to give me your views, uh, I, I'd, I'd welcome or I'd, uh, I'd really be curious to know what you think uh, if you agree that air layering the top off the tree will actually uh, result in a better uh, product or a better tree in the longer term. Today the work that I'm, I'm going to do and demonstrate to you is, is uh, going to be repotting the tree. Um, the, the tree the roots would have filled the tree, uh, the, the container up by now and uh, it's important to keep the vigor of the tree up to that I repot it and as I said to you already with the, the leaves starting to unfurl, the buds swelling, that is an indication that the timing is correct to do this procedure now. First thing I'm going to do is just to create a gap between the growing or the root ball and the container. Um, this just makes it easier to remove the tree. Be careful when you're doing this. This is a root uh, sickle, or, or just a sickle rather. 
uh, be careful when using one that you don't scrape the side of the container or the inside of the lip of the container, particularly if it is a valuable uh, container, you want to be careful. When you, wire, when you repotted the previous time, should have uh, wired the tree in. So just cut those wires uh, to be able to release the tree. It should be easy now to lift the tree out. And uh, we'll just take it from the one side and move it, lift it up to the other. We can lift it out of the container. So before going any further, I like to take the, the, the container outside and just give it a good rinse, give it a good clean uh, and prepare it with uh, fresh drainage uh, media, uh, uh, mesh over the holes as well as uh, new tie down wires so that once your tree has been, once you've uh, pre finished preparing the root ball, um, the, the, the container is ready. The next thing I like to do is just to remove the underside of the root ball, the matted roots, and you can use the same sickle to do that with. The next step is I'm just going to use an angled tweezer and rake off the top layer of soil uh, accumulation of uh, organic material, uh, fertilizer and all that. And sometimes you'll also find, uh, or very often you'll find, that uh, you've got a mat of surface rooting which may actually have been impeding uh, your drainage as well. In a recent video that I did on uh, field growing, uh, I explained the ideal angles to cut the roots at. And one of the things that I said was that it's best if you can cut the root uh, horizontally so that the, the wound is facing down. Um, a less desirable angle is to cut it at a 30 degree or 45 degree angle showing up. Um, obviously the worst is just if you cut it straight, uh, you know, just kind of just cut it off. That's the, that's the, worst, <laughs> the worst method. Um, but if you notice now, despite years of growth after it was cut, this still has not calloused over entirely. Uh, and, and so you can actually see just this big uh, area of, of wood that is decaying um, and that I will now need to have to treat, uh, get out the rotting wood and uh, uh, seal that and then uh, activate the edge of the callus to, or acti activate the edge of the, the plant tissue here so that it can start callusing over. As you're combing these roots out, the motion should be one of the trunk being the center point and then you you combing out to the as if you were going to, spreading out like the spokes of a wheel or something. Um, the idea is that you are combing the roots uh, out so that they spread out radially from the trunk as a center point. The next step is to using a, a blunt uh, ice pick or a chopstick or some other implement is just to work the, the soil out from inside or between the roots. Now you'll notice that the soil is fairly wet. I, I would prefer that it would actually be a little bit drier but it's been raining quite a bit and uh, so I've had to I have to work uh, with what there is and uh, it just means that when it's wetter when the soil is, is very wet, it, it's, it's not as easy for the soil to be eliminated and also uh, the roots can break easier as well because you're applying more force in order to get them to, to, to for them to be combed out. So the process now is, is just that you're having to work from the outside of the root ball towards the interior slowly and uh, removing growing media um, as you go into or as you approach the core of the trunk. Uh, if, if you're using something like I am, which is a screwdriver that's just been 
made into a bit of a spike. Be sure not to be too forceful. You don't want to be stabbing roots as you, as you do this. Uh, and take your time, don't be in too much of a rush. And then as I say, the, the action is, is one where you're pushing in and then kind of pulling backwards. And you do this slowly as, and, and, and as you do that, you'll be raking the roots out for, um, that have become, that have been growing horizontally or across. Um, you'll be bringing those ones straight out. And I'm gonna use a rake just to clear out the bottom of the root ball. I'm going to use a pair of scissors to cut away these roots that are creating a, almost like a, um, uh, a void beneath, which is directly beneath the trunk and where the root ball is being developed. Uh, this, these crisscrossing roots make it difficult for uh, to, to get growing media inside there. So it's best to rather remove any downward growing uh, downward growing roots or these roots that are crisscrossing like this I prefer to to cut those back um, when they you know if obviously if they've formed uh, to a certain thing to a to a degree of thickness and you can see that yeah there's still some old media in this area yeah so we're going to want to replace that so i've cleaned out this area which is directly below the trunk and um, as you can see i've removed the majority of the old growing media and then any roots that were crisscrossing here that would have be, it, um, very likely have created little pockets uh, when this was placed onto the the new media that we're going to that i'm going to repot it into now uh, so it's very uh, you must be careful uh, of that uh, you don't want any voids below this area because th th that can lead to all sorts of problems. Um, so I've cleaned this out and now there's a little bit of a depression in here, a little bit of a hollow. So I must remember that uh, when I'm uh, placing it onto the new media that I must make the media def definitively domed and then work the media down or work the tree down onto that so that it fills up this space here with media. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors that I use for root work. Don't use your same scissors that you use for branches for the root work and just to cut these roots nice and cleanly. So once you've uh, trimmed the roots back a little bit and uh, you've worked all the soil out, the old soil out, you can also, some people, wash uh, the roots this is something that you can of course do with deciduous trees but uh, not really recommended for conifers um, but I'm demonstrating repotting a deciduous tree anyway to you today um, so it's not relevant but yes you can wash the roots if you would like to um, and then we're going to uh, go to the next step which is to prepare the pot with growing media you should ideally have completed preparing your container before you expose the roots of your tree because obviously they can dry out uh, and um, that can be quite detrimental to the health of the tree. So it's best to prepare the container before the time. Uh, cover all the holes uh, with drainage mesh and then of course using wire to, that you're going to use to tie down the tree. Make sure that that is in place as well. Uh, you can just secure those wires temporarily to the side so that they're not in the way when you start working with the tree. Prepared some growing medium which is going to be, it's actually equal parts of akadama, pumice and lava. Uh, generally for deciduous trees you're going to be using a two part akadama to one part pumice, one part lava. Um, except I <coughs> I'm trying to pick up the vigor of this tree, so I'm going to have less uh, water retention and uh, so I'm using less Akadama. Now if you'll remember, I said that we, I needed to dome or mound the area in the center and that is to allow or compensate for the hollow of the root ball below the trunk and now we're going to test fit the tree. Ideally you want the tree to the, the roots or the, the soil level should be level with the rim of the container. And the reason why you want the soil level to be 
the same as the container is, is firstly to make watering easier. Uh, if you have water, if you have the tree sort of perched onto a higher level, the water is going to tend to want to run off to the ends um, and then either flow over the lip or otherwise just run down the sides of the in, inside of the container. But if you have a flat soil surface, it's more likely to be a little bit more even. Um, this tree is going to go into the center of the container uh, when viewed from the front. And then also it's important that you provide enough uh, equal space from uh, at the back and the front um, for roots uh, to develop uh, towards the, those particular areas as well. Once you've confirmed the level is correct, the planting angles are correct from all sides, uh, then you need to secure the tree into the container. This is very important to ensure that the tree doesn't move uh, while it's settling into the container, uh, maybe from wind or being knocked by somebody or any anything like that, um, that just it just prevents any damage from occurring to the new roots. You'd like to keep this wire as hidden as possible, so try and feed it through roots. Um, in such a way that it's not going to be visible w once uh, the, the soil is, more soil is mounded up. And we're going to repeat that on both sides, of course. Aluminium wire doesn't have too much uh, tensile strength, so be careful when you are twisting this wire tight not to snap it. And you can do that by pulling and then twisting down, like a corkscrew kind of fashion. So you pull it and then you twist it down. Um, and then you're unlikely to snap the wire as uh, if you use that technique. Now the next step is to put some more growing medium in and uh, to work that in with a chopstick or other similar implement. This next step is very important because you want to avoid any cavities in the growing medium. So it's important to take time and just work growing medium into all those areas between the roots, particularly if you have little areas that when you were cutting or working with the roots that you noticed uh, were little hollows. Uh, try and remember where those are and make sure that you do a good job of working the growing medium into them. The roots won't develop into voids, uh, so it's important that the, that the entire root ball is filled with growing medium. Once you've finished chopsticking the soil in, then it's a good idea just to tamp it down gently, uh, but you want to compact it slightly. Uh, and this is actually what you use this side of the rake spatula for, it's one of the uses anyway, um, is in these areas uh, between the roots, just to push the medium down, get it flat. Um, and then for the open areas, you can just use a, a block of wood. Uh, as I said, don't 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 hit it. Uh, you don't want to crush the media, but you just want to almost tamping it down um, to get into any hollows that might still remain. So the tree has been thoroughly watered, and now the last and final step is going to be to add top dressing. And the purpose of the top dressing is to ensure that surface roots uh, will form. Uh, so in other words, roots will form right at the uh, top of the growing medium um, so that you can make use, full use of the container and then also to ensure that the growing media doesn't shift around when you water and uh, sort of erode from, from the container. There's essentially two ways in which you can uh, apply the surface dressing. You can either wet it before the time and then uh, put it on your palm of your hand and slap it down onto the surface or alternatively you can uh, use it dry and then uh, wet it afterwards uh, so it's really your preference um, if you do it dry just make sure that you wet it with a fine mist or something before uh, it, it, before you water it because otherwise you just it's going to spray everywhere uh, you don't need to make this very thick, probably about five millimeters or so. 
in thickness and that will be sufficient and this top dressing of course has got mixed into it uh, spag uh, um, live moss spores as well and uh, that will the sphagnum moss now becomes an ideal uh, rooting medium for the or not rooting rather uh, growing medium for the for the moss to take hold of that is now the end of the repotting process uh, and with all as the same or as is the case with all repotted or newly repotted trees try and keep them out of uh, wind uh, wind has the ability to dry the tree out very rapidly um, faster so than the roots that uh, have yet to stabilize can can take water or moisture up to replenish so keep it in a very sheltered position a uh, very bright shade or very uh, maybe partial sun morning sun not afternoon sun uh, withhold fertilizer at least for the first say month three to four weeks uh, until you see that there's active growth um, developing from the tree and then you can start lightly fertilizing again. Before I end off this workshop I did mention that I'm considering layering this tree uh, so I, I'm thinking about uh, this sort of area yeah and it's quite obviously quite difficult you need to use a little bit of imagination um, a very a smaller tree uh, would start here so it would just be the top but that seems like an awful waste of the rest of the tree just to to sit with the rest uh, just to sit with a showing sized uh, celtus um, otherwise one could make it a bit bigger and layer off down at, uh, at this sort of height here um, and then make the tree from that Anyway, uh, it's uh, something to think about and uh, I'll be deciding late uh, spring what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I hope to see you next Friday uh, when I upload the next video. Thanks very much for watching then. Take care and goodbye.